Hey guys, today I wanted to show you my apartment in Korea. I've been meaning to film this video for a little while now, but I never got around to it, mainly because I thought I would decorate a little bit more beforehand, and I never decorated my place because I knew that after a year of living in Korea, I wanted to move to Seoul, so I figured I'm going to have to move all my stuff anyways. It literally looks like nobody lives here, and I'm very much aware of that. If you're interested in the details about my apartment, I'm going to get into that a little bit more at the end of the video, but let's get into the apartment tour. So first we're gonna get started at my front door for whatever reason the hallway light is not on right now so when you walk into my apartment this is what the hallway looks like and on my left here I have my shoe closet but at the very top here I have all of my toilet paper and over here I have a bunch of towels and face cloths over here I have all of my drawers that I use for organization. These are from Ikea. This one over here is pretty miscellaneous. I have like a GoPro, um, just random things that I'm not really using. This one really has no purpose or organization at all. This one over here is a lot of my extra toiletries, extra soaps, and things that I might run out of. I have some lash glue, Clarisonic heads, face wash, and extra cotton pads. And I just like to keep stock of things just so I don't have to buy things in case they do run out. In this one over here, I have all of my handbags. So they're just in their dust bags here. This drawer over here is all of my accessories. So I have some hats, belts, scarves, basically everything that I've brought to Korea with me, all my paperwork, any books I've accumulated. I have my utility bills here, all of my receipts. I have some paints here like extra notebooks that I haven't used yet. I have some thread cards that I've accumulated and anything that I need from sewing. Over here is a drawer that I have with all of my hot tools inside. So I have my curling iron, my hair dryer, and my straightener. I also have like a shoe shiner in here. And the rest is just my shoes. Moving on to the next closet. So this closet, is some of my stuff that I have hung up here. On the top here, I have all of my dresses, blazers, sweaters, and some tops that I just need to have hung up. So it just looks like this. There's no particular organization from it. In this closet over here, I have all of my skirts. They just have hung up here. By the way, all of the clothing hangers that I have are from Ikea. Over here, I have my laundry basket, which is also from Ikea, my everyday bag. And in the bottom here, I have all of my tops and bottoms. So these tops are just pajama tops and workout tops that I have. In the very bottom drawer, I have all of my workout bottoms and pajama bottoms. The next closet I have over here is the rest of my clothing. Do have my luggage which I literally jammed into that space right there it doesn't fit that easily but I really wanted my suitcase out of the way and in the corner I have a backpack and everything else that I just didn't want to be seen over here is all of my jackets so I have my winter coat trench coat here and like a lighter coat too at the bottom I have a yoga mat and this is a mat that I bring every single time I have picnics and a drying rack as well. I have all of my sweaters and long sleeve tops. In here is all of my t-shirts and short sleeve tops. So any tanks and everything on this side. Over here, I have just two skirts and a pair of shorts. In here, I have all of my pants on one side and all of my jeans on the other. In this first drawer here, I just have all of my bras. And then in the next drawer is really just my socks, underwear, and bathing suits. Now we're moving into my bathroom. And I really do like my bathroom because I think the lighting is so nice and the mirrors are so big. It covers the whole length of the bathroom, so you can see that. Here's my sink. And on this side, I have my shower. I really do like my shower because it's closed off from the rest of the bathroom. So I do have this glass door here. And in Korea, it's very common 
oh my god so loud <laughs> it's very common that you'll just have a shower head in the middle of your bathroom and no door but i do like that i have a door because it's closed off from the rest of my bathroom so over here is my medicine cabinet so at the top here i have my toilet paper cotton pads and other things that I don't really use every day, like nail polish, lipstick, and all of my nail stuff. In this section over here, I have my makeup bag on one side, and then the rest is just my everyday hair stuff. So I have hairspray, heat protectants, dry shampoo. I also have sunscreen and lotion. At the bottom is more of my everyday stuff. So I have all of my skincare on one side. I also do have my makeup brushes, q-tips, on the other side I have any sheet masks, toothpaste, deodorant, more of my everyday stuff. By the way, I did get this container from Emart. This one is from Muji, and these acrylic containers are from Daiso, I believe. So I actually have quite a few of those, as you can see, just to store all of my stuff. Now we're going to move into the kitchen, so this is my fridge, I'm going to show you the freezer first. So in my freezer, I don't have that many things. This is just my compost bag. Keep your compost in the freezer because it will smell, especially in the summertime. I have ice cubes and dumplings, shrimp and some ice cream. Okay, next section, fridge. I'm always curious to see what people have in their fridge. Mine's kind of gross right now and there's nothing really of substance in here. Very top, I just have like food that I made and in that big pot, there's rice. I have mushrooms, green onions, bread like leftover kimchi from when I made kimchi jjigae, eggs. I have in this very bottom one whole tomato and some leftover like peaches. I think there's like one left. On this side, I have all of my other stuff. So some eggs, sauces, milk, garlic, and soju. That's literally it for my fridge. As we move into here, you're gonna see my kitchen. I actually have a washer in my kitchen and I thought that was so weird when I first moved in but I realized everyone's washer is in their kitchen so it's pretty normal for me now. Let's move into here. So I have all of my stuff in here. Like I have two glasses I'm pretty sure and that's pretty much it and a measuring cup. And my lunch bag, random jars at the very top there. In here, I have glass containers. These are all the plates and bowls that I have. This is just my sink. I bought this toaster oven when I came here. This is pretty cool because it is a radio and it also tells the time. So sometimes I used to listen to the Korean radio when I had no internet. At the very top, I just have some vitamin drinks. The things in the middle are some foods that I don't really eat every single day. This stuff I use a little bit more often. So I just have like tea, coffee, peanut butter, chips, protein bars, things like that. I'm moving into the bottom here. This is just underneath my sink. And in that corner is all of my cleaning supplies. If you're wondering where they were hiding, I have like all of my knives just on the side there. In this drawer, I have all of my spices and sauces, so salt and pepper, sugar, anything else that you may need in your life is in here. In this drawer, I have all of my pots and pans. I really don't have that many cutting boards. I have my rice here and olive oil. In this drawer over here, I just have Kleenex, some takeaway cutlery, and my cutlery over here. In this drawer, I just have bags. I have some extra sponges. These are the bags that we have to use for garbage. So this is the garbage bag, and these are the composting bags. They're gonna be different depending on where you live. So here, I just keep all of my garbage, and I normally put any recycling up here, and then I just take that down pretty regularly. This is actually to store rice. I'm not gonna pull it out because it's gonna get stuck. I don't really know how to use it, but it's too much work. So when we get over here, these are all of my plants. These are flowers that Hung Su arranged for me that I just dried out, so I think they're so pretty. And then I do have a plant over here. Also, me and Hung Su went to like a painting sort of brunch place and she just made me that card as well. Here is my mirror. I got it from Ikea. 
So I really do like it because I feel like it makes me look so tall. In here, I just have this nice little picture thing and this is like all of the power in my place. I thought it was so pretty because I didn't know what it was at first. And here, this thing, like when people ring my doorbell, they actually appear here, which I've never actually seen because my mirror blocks it. So I just thought it didn't work before, but then I realized I never even tried to look at it. These are the chairs that I bought. These are from Ikea and I got the cushions from Ikea as well. Okay, now we're moving into my bed. This bed was actually my coworkers, the one that I replaced. So I didn't have to buy a bed or anything, but this place did not come with any furniture at all. So I was pretty thankful for at least having this. So I had something when I moved here. This blanket came with me from Canada. This is from the Bay, so I had to represent. The bedding is all from Ikea. I have the exact same bedding at home. I always just get plain white ones because I'm boring like that. The comforter is from Ikea and the pillows I bought from Emart. I really did like this place and one of the main reasons I chose it is because it has massive windows. So the first thing I do every single day when I wake up is open the blinds and just let all the light shine in my face. It really helps to wake me up. It makes me really excited for the day. As for plants, I have accumulated quite a few since I've been here because I don't have anything to decorate my place. This one is the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life. So it's supposed to be a green onion plant. This is not green onion, this is like grass. And I've never felt so ripped off before. This plant is getting pretty nice and it's growing a lot. And everything else is here. Oh yeah, this is just a diffuser. I got it from my co-teacher for my birthday. And I just have a candle in there. These drawers are fake. There's nothing in there, so it's just nothing. I'm not even gonna bother opening it. These ones actually do have stuff, so in this one here, I just have the iron, some screws, some screwdrivers, and a lighter. And this one here is more of my everyday stuff, so this acts as my nightstand because I don't have one. Here, I just have any like cords and wires that I'm not using at the moment. And over here, I have my router for my internet. On this side, I have all my surgical masks and all of my KF94 masks are just over there. And this is all of my medicine. So the first thing I want to cover is housing versus non-housing. I actually have a non-housing option and I didn't get an option on whether I wanted housing or non-housing just because my school only offers the non-housing option. So with non-housing, you have to pay the rent by yourself every single month, but the school will pay you enough money to compensate for that. You just have to literally transfer the money to your landlord every single month. Whereas with the housing, your school pays for your rent every single month and that's pretty much the difference. However, with the non-housing, you actually get to choose your own place. So I got to see a real estate agent the first time I came to my school and I saw eight places in one day. The thing that was annoying is I had to pick a place right away. And if you have housing, you pretty much just end up with whatever apartment your school gives to you and it can be very hit or miss. I've seen some people at my school at different branches end up with some ugly apartments. So I'm really glad that I actually got the non-housing at the end of the day, just because I ended up with a place that I really do like. Some people I've seen have the housing options have really nice apartments like very new appliances and like a lot of stuff that comes with their apartment it just really depends on I guess your luck if you want to live in Korea and rent an apartment you have to do a key money deposit that can be anywhere from 5 million to 10 million Korean won and it's just a one-time payment you do get it back when you move out of your place but the thing that sucks is you don't get it back until you move out of your place so if you decide to live in the same apartment that could be like a year later maybe two years later so you're not really going to see that money again but the good thing about the key money deposit is it makes your rent a lot cheaper so you're going to be paying a lot less every single month just because you have your money in 
into the apartment. The nice thing about schools is if it's your first year as a teacher, your school is going to pay for your key money deposit for the first year. So right now my school is paying 5 million Korean won for my key money deposit and I don't have to do that at all. If I did decide to stay with my school for a second year, then I would have to pay the 5 million by myself. So if you do plan on staying with your school for another year, then it's a good thing to save up for your key money deposit very early in your stay in Korea so you don't have to stress too much about it at the end of your stay. Now I wanted to get into the price of my apartment. So right now I'm paying 600,000 Korean won per month for rent. 600,000 Korean won for a place in Anyang is actually quite pricey. I think maybe it's because my school didn't put in that much for my key money deposit. They only put 5 million. So I'm not sure if that's it, but this is the cheapest place that I actually saw with my real estate agent. All the other places were 600,000 and up up to like 700,000. I think I pay a lot of money for the utilities. I'm pretty sure this is like an office tell place that I'm living in right now, which is like a studio apartments. So it's a pretty large building and I heard that the utilities are costing a lot more for places like this. I know people that live in the really tiny buildings. I'm not sure what those are called. If I can figure that out, I'm gonna insert that right now. But pretty much the buildings are only like 10 floors or less and they pay a lot less for utilities. I've heard of people paying like $50 to like $100 a month for utilities, which is so cheap compared to what I'm paying. The cheapest my utilities have ever been living in this apartment is like 150,000 Korean won per month. And the most expensive I've ever paid is 230,000 Korean won. It really fluctuates somewhere between that depending on the summer and the winter months. I really don't use the air conditioning a whole lot, so I think that that's why it's pretty cheap in the summer for me, but if you use it a lot, I'm sure it'll be a lot more money. Whereas in the winter, it was very, very cold in my apartments, and I definitely had the floor heating on, which kind of sucks because in Korea, it's actually like hot water floor heating underneath the hardwood floors. I don't really know how that works, but... Basically, it's like it's heating up the hot water underneath the hardwood floors to warm up your entire apartment And I feel like that sounds like it uses a lot of energy Which I did for like maybe two months of living here after I realized how much money it was I actually got one of those heating pads for my bed So I just never really had the heating on and I just had like a really warm bed So the only thing that came with my apartment was like the washer the fridge and the stove top and those are really the only appliances that it came with i know a lot of people that have housing options end up with a lot of stuff at their house they have like a bed they get a microwave like a kettle like a bunch of stuff that the apartment actually came with or a lot of things that the previous tenants had left behind and in my place it was completely bare like i had to buy everything by myself I did buy a toaster oven because i don't have a microwave and other than that i didn't really buy anything else if you do want to have a lot of furniture maybe you're wanting to stay in Korea for like a year and not much longer than that then it's probably a better option to get a housing plan because that way you're gonna end up with a lot of stuff from everyone else and if you want to stay here long term maybe you want to do non housing just because you want to buy your own stuff but regardless it's gonna be a lot of money so it's definitely something to keep in mind all right that was pretty much it for my video today I hope it was somewhat helpful if you are planning on moving to Korea or if you want to look at different options for apartments here and things like that if you do have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments or message me whatever that may be and i will see you in my next video